rapid growth of innovation within communities is astounding. Technology is ubiquitous, it's in our pockets. Reams of data are being streamed across the air as we speak right now in the communities that we live in. That creates massive economic opportunity, but there's a huge risk, almost an existential risk, of that economic growth is only consolidated within the hands of a few businesses, or even worse, just a few people. What this means in terms of smart cities is that we need to find a way to take the wealth and the tax revenue that's created by massive new technology jobs, new innovations being commercialized and deployed to the marketplace in cities, and make sure that that's reinvested in some of the imbalances that it's creating. In the next 10 years, cities are going to be a home to 70% of the world's population. And with all the challenges that density brings to our world, uh, cities are also where diversity and ingenuity and innovation grows. And if we can't make our cities responsive to the needs of our residents, we're also going to lose that ingenuity and innovation. We can look at cities as many thinkers throughout our history, Lewis Brandeis and others have said we're laboratories of democracy, that this is the, this is the scale on which solutions can be innovated. We can have cities that even though we're in urban spaces, are very much natural ecosystems because we're all breathing air and we all share with plants and trees and birds and other species as well. So those are really exciting conversations to have at Smart Cities. Well, it's extremely important for us to humanize the conversation around whether it's sustainability or resiliency or even the issue around Smart Cities. Citizens want to know, is the bus running? Am I going to get water? Is my trash going to get picked up? Uh, and when you start talking about applying smart city principles or technology, what the citizens want to know is, how is that going to help my bottom line? But it's very important for a city to understand what are you seeking to solve before you start to think about technology. Define your problem and then apply the technology solutions, but apply technology solutions in an open manner so you're not tied down to one operator for 20, 30 years. As mayors, we're always looking for ways to solve problems uh, more efficiently and thereby make our governments more effective. And I think so many times there's an attempt to try to go at it alone when in fact partnerships are necessary. Uh, the days of going it alone are over. Real collaboration and real innovation happens when you have commitment to a proven process, to a generosity of spirit and to an outcome that isn't necessarily about you and your bottom line, but a commitment to the bottom line of what's best for making a city a happier, healthier, and safer place to be. As cities become more uh, constrained because of the mass influx of people, in order to maintain quality of your life, for example, we, we don't have any options but to innovate together. Um, and that's what we, we're trying to accomplish here. The biggest reason we're passionate about it is because we think what I call the problems of 2050, which are climate, rise of robots, uh, questions about the democracy being efficient, all these big questions can be resolved or certainly improved by the, what cities do. We live in a very politically polarized time, but actually when you look out onto the conference floor, you just see people talking and chatting and meeting and. And, and working together. I think it's very natural. And New York is very much like that as a city, actually. It's a very collaborative city. I think that's reflected in this conference. And I do think it's a model for how interactions ought to happen. Hopefully we'll have repercussions politically across the world as people realize we're all you know, more similar than we are different. Right here, what you have on display are great innovations that are begging the questions of how those innovations will actually live in a city. This is a matter of coming together, not just around money, not just around economic growth, but also around health and well-being and community and culture and equity. It's a great chance to hear from you know, mayors that are leading the work in other cities because innovation in city government often starts from the mayor at the top. Governments can become some of those very key and important test sites to take tools and say, we'd like to deploy this in your city and test it uh, using your staff, using your uh, support resources. And I think that's a conversation that makes Smart Cities you know, New York Conference so important when you're able to establish those partnerships. The 
collaborative aspects of multiple sectors. I'd like to see them scale around the world. I'd like to see ideas from one place uh, be used in other places. And if we can help do that through this conference, I think we'll be successful, uh, not just as a conference, but you know, as an entire global movement around technology and, and urban life. Take that power of people, take the technology that's rising up, and take the fact that cities are this force of change. So we said, this is the place to change the world and allow us to get to 2050 without a collapse of the climate, without robots ruining our lives, uh, without healthcare becoming a problem. So we feel it's the way to change the world.